Hi guys. I just wanted to share a win I've recently had and that I'm very excited about. Um, some of you know how hard it is to find the right talent agent to represent you as an actor or a voiceover artist. Well, it's even harder to find that representation as a dialect coach. And of course, you know, since the whole COVID catastrophe started, a lot of people in the industry have found themselves out of work and have had to become creative in finding, you know, alternative work and ways to cover the rent. And I'm told that many have put themselves forward as dialect coaches, fancying that as they can do accents and surely they can coach people in them, right? Wrong. Co coaching is an art that requires not just skills attained over years of practice, but hundreds of hours of trial and error exploring ways of making something work for thousands of students with a range of backgrounds, needs, and aptitudes. Well, a couple of days ago, I got what could be considered the dialect coach's equivalent of a royal seal of approval. I was given the opportunity to be observed coaching someone in an accent. It was an Afrikaans accent, if you really want to know, and the, the script excerpt I chose was from the South African sci-fi movie District 9, but you know, that's details. Both my observer and my test subject were dialect coaches of considerable standing. In fact, I recognized one from Instagram, and I was as nervous as I'd ever been. I've been officially observed in a teaching environment several times as an examiner. And while I was a program director, I observed more teachers myself uh, than I care to recall. But I can tell you, it doesn't matter how many times you're observed, the process is always nerve wracking. But anyway, here's something that I found out that I hadn't really thought about before. Unlike me, most dialect coaches have never been observed by anyone other than individual clients. They do what they do in the way that's always worked for them. The problem, of course, is that if it doesn't work for the client, then the client often assumes that it was a shortcoming on their part. They think, well, this coach comes highly recommended and they've even helped to get such and such an actor, an Oscar. So it must be something wrong with me. You know, I'm, I'm just not cut out to learn accents. Well, <clears throat> I mean, if you're an actor in film or TV, uh, or especially in theater, you'll be quite familiar with the focused scrutiny of many eyes and ears, and you're no doubt aware that you're constantly being held to a really high standard. But from my experience, like playing a character on stage in front of a live audience is somewhat different to being observed, being yourself, doing your own thing. I mean, I guess that's closer to improv. Sure, you, you've got a script, but that's actually just your prop. You have a goal in mind, uh, but you've got no external direction and no idea where it's going to take you en route to your destination which needs to be arrived at within a strict deadline, which in this case was 30 minutes. So then the time came to hear about how I performed, and it was much better than I'd expected. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say, it was really good. I haven't mentioned any names, as nothing has been officially agreed or signed as yet, but even having this validation is a huge deal for me and a strong affirmation that I'm definitely heading in the right direction and that I'm really able to help people become even better at what they do. Anyway, tomorrow, Friday, I'm going live again as I do every week. So this week's Friday Live at Five is about the curse of perfectionism.
A direct link to the live broadcast is j.mp slash tlt005. That's all lowercase. If you're a perfectionist, I'd be happy to have you on my live as a guest tomorrow. Just DM me or in the comments or whatever. Don't be shy. Just share. And I'd be happy to have you on then. Otherwise, it will just be me. So until then, I hope to speak to you soon. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye.